This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. This is Resource Center on Enterprise, and I'm Lim Sun Hing. Diaspora is not a word we commonly hear in this country. Likely, it is not a word in our vocabulary. What is diaspora? It's kind of like brain drain when the country loses its talent and um, intelligent minds. In my mind, a diaspora is, I suppose in, in our context, would be the Malaysians who live abroad, who have decided to go and live abroad. Well, diaspora is when a community is transplanted away from their home to other places, often in search for better opportunities, which naturally means the homeland is deprived of new talent. Diaspora is a word with Greek origins, which expresses the scattering or the dispersion of a population from its common origin in a smaller, defined geographic area, well, to all over. My first encounter with the term was in a university course on the diaspora of the Jews. According to the World Bank report titled Malaysia Economic Monitor, Brain Drain, Malaysian migration is a skills migration. Those with skills and tertiary education are seen to be leaving for OECD countries, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, countries like the United States, Australia and the United Kingdom. Same World Bank's 2011 report states that there are some one and a half million Malaysians living and working abroad. Is this a concern? People leave because they want to make their lives better. And uh, in this country, it happens a lot. I think a lot of the good talent has gone. That is quite troublesome because what's left could be not the cream of the crop. It could be just the B graders or because maybe the A graders have left for better opportunities. I think it's quite a sad thing because uh, most people when they leave, they are looking for greener pastures and that is because they aren't able to find what they want, where they are, so they move on. Of course, there is Talent Corp, set up specifically to recruit talent, either Malaysians or non-Malaysians abroad to come to live and work in our country. It is tapping Malaysians to come back, asserting on its website that there is no better time than now to return to be a part of this exciting journey as Malaysia is going through a transformation. Talented Malaysians can band together to spur the country to a high income status by 2020. So pack your bags and balik kampung as many opportunities await you on your home turf. Let's be Malaysians for Malaysia. Talent Corp also runs a returning expert program to attract, facilitate and retain aspiring Malaysian returnees. It also has a scholarship talent attraction and retention star program, a collaboration that Talent Corp has with the Public Service Department. The Malaysian diaspora is often seen in a negative light as the brain drain. Can it be viewed differently? The country that receives diaspora communities, you know, has a a far more metropolitan, cosmopolitan feel to them. You could make it positive in which if it can somehow allow a home nation to uh, re-infuse its community with more with returning talent but that will require you know incentivizing their return well to me if people go there to acquire skills that they feel that they can't acquire here in malaysia and they bring it back and contribute to to different aspects different companies here in malaysia i think that's great Um, What they're doing overseas now probably uh, would impact Malaysia a lot more because their minds or thought processes could be a lot more progressive and that could um, contribute to the modernization of this country. Coming up in the second half of today's show is an interview with Kingsley Aikens, leading guru of diaspora and global philanthropy. He's the founding director of the Australian Ireland Fund and founder CEO of Diaspora Matters, a company that believes in the positive aspects of the diaspora phenomenon. This is Resource Centre on Enterprise, BFM 89.9, The Business Station. You're tuned to Resource Centre on Enterprise and I'm Lim Sun Hing. Diaspora, the scattering and dispersing of a people, for some is a concern. There are some 1.5 million Malaysians working and living abroad. Many are just south of the causeway. But diaspora can also have its benefits. Kinsley Aikens, a guru of diaspora and global philanthropy, is the founding director of the Australian Ireland Fund and founder CEO of Diaspora Matters. He has researched, written and spoken extensively on this subject about the global diaspora of communities and how they are able to reverse the brain drain epidemic. 
I, I guess the fact that you are Irish and that diaspora matters to you is no accident. It's not an accident. Look, I come from a country where we now have 70 million in the Irish diaspora around the world. So, you know, we only have 5 million people on the island of Ireland. We have 70 million in our diaspora. So to us, it is a significant resource, an important part of our lives. So I'm familiar to that. I guess people who do not know Irish history, why this diaspora? Well, you know, you really have to understand a thing called the famine which happened in 1846, 1847. The potato famine. Potato famine. So, you know, the population of Ireland at that time was 8 million. The population of Britain was 16 million. So the population now is 5 versus uh, 55. So what happened? The potato failed over two years. A million people died. A million people left straight away. And then over the next period of time, emigration became a huge part of Irish life. So that was really why there are 40 million people in the United States of Irish origin. So it's not a question of just livelihood. It's a question of living. It's a question. That was a question of survival. And, of course, many people didn't survive. Uh, it was a brutal and a sad and tragic period and cast a shadow over Ireland's history, the famine. And it's, the repercussions of it are still there today. But in today's context, why is any diaspora important? Well, because I think in the old days, when you left, you were gone and you were gone and you were lost forever you couldn't connect back very often. My grandmother had uh, three brothers who uh, left Ireland when they were in their early 20s and their parents never saw them again. Mm -hmm. They went to Australia. Those days have gone. People now go, but they come and go. Technology, communications, transport has revolutionized the whole element of migration. So people now actually can be both here and there. They can lead what we call hyphenated lives. They can be American and Polish, Australian and Greek, Canadian and Scottish. And so people now are associating with a lot with the countries in which they're from or have ancestry or affinity with. But with today's diaspora, are these people as connected as perhaps, you know, I mean, based on what I know about Ireland, even though people migrated, there was always this sense of they, they took with them the Irish culture. And so you have a Boston and you have folks in Chicago, you know, they kind of celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day and all that. But is that happening with other cultures and other peoples throughout the world in their diaspora? Yes, absolutely, and more so than ever before. Now, there's 240 million people in the world now who live in a country other than the one they were born in. (laughs) That number's gone up from 150 million in 1990. That is a huge amount of people. If it was a country, it'd be the fifth largest country in the world. These diasporas are strong, they're big, they're influential, they're powerful, and in many cases, very successful. And countries now are seeing them as a resource. Countries now believe they have such a thing as diaspora capital. That's a new phenomenon, something I've talked and lectured and written a lot about, a country having diaspora capital. And what that is, is the overseas resources that's available to a country or a region or a city or a place or even an organization. And it's made up of people, networks, resources, ideas, opinions, concerns for their country of origin, ancestry or affinity. But what are the challenges to kind of connect to these people? I think the biggest challenge of all is to find out who they are, where they are, and what they're doing. But again, technology is pretty amazing. You can find out a lot about people, and then you can reach out to them. And these people are willing to be found. Yes. I look. I, I think that these people not only are willing to be found, they often self-select themselves and, and volunteer and put their hands up and get engaged. And in the old days, engagement tended to be remittances. Now, remittances is a big industry. It was last, this year, the World Bank says remittances, that's money sent home Mm -hmm. to friends and family, 540 billion US dollars. But it's not only remittances now, it's philanthropy, it's trade, it's investment, it's uh, culture, it's sport, it's uh, education, it's tourism. All sorts of initiatives are out there now in this space. Do these networks created up through the diaspora lend to philanthropy more than to, let's say, business collaborations for businesses and therefore for the economies in the home countries? You know, what's the interesting thing is, in my experience of this industry, was that philanthropy tends to, to be the portal through which people enter into a relationship with their home country. And very often it's their first port of entry. Um, and when they get engaged through philanthropy, they often then get engaged in other elements, um, investing, um, supporting small and medium-sized enterprises, getting involved in educational initiatives, getting involved in tourism initiatives, and getting involved in lots of other areas. So philanthropy is an interesting first step on the road, but there's many, many other variations on the theme. 
in the context of Malaysia losing part of its educated population to Australia, Singapore, United States, UK, what can we learn from your foundation so that we can tap into these people? Well, you know what we found that actually brain drain can become brain gain and can, can become brain exchange. And that if you really connect with these smart people around the world who've left and gone overseas and who desire to have a connection relationship back with the home country, you can achieve enormous amounts. And these people, even though they're overseas, can contribute enormously back to their home country. They don't have to come back and live here to do that. What did you do? What kind of activities did you organize? Look, let me tell you the truth behind our organization, not which easy. raised a quarter of a billion dollars. The first thing we did, and way back, you know, 25 years ago, we had a big black tie fundraising dinner in the Waldorf Astoria in New York, and we brought the great and the good of the people that we knew. We brought them together to tell them about this, and we wanted to raise some money. The truth is that initial dinner of the American Ireland Fund was so unsuccessful, the only reason we had a second dinner a year later was to pay for the first dinner we had <laughs> in 1976. So, so it wasn't easy? It wasn't no, easy well, you know, everything starts with that first step, and so we had a bit, of a bit of a false start. But that was, you know, a quarter of a billion dollars ago. And what started with an unsuccessful dinner has now is now in 39 cities in 13 countries, over 100 events a year, raises all that amount of money you said, supports thousands of organizations engages tens of thousands of people but it started with a failed dinner to some extent you know the the irish have a a more homogenous culture a more homogenous people over here we have such diverse peoples and cultures it presents some challenges well you know we have our challenges too we're not that homogenous in Ireland. (laughs) there are some divisions too in ireland and here's an interesting thing i discovered throughout this work diaspora is not about a country it's about place Hmm. and that place may not be a country it may be a region it may be a city maybe a town maybe a village it may even be an organization i think the american university system has shown how people their diasporas are their alumni and in a way diaspora and alumni are interchangeable and i think for malaysia people may not want to connect necessarily with a Ma- malaysia necess- but they may want to connect with a part of malaysia or where they're from and where their heritage is and where their roots are or where their genealogy is and there are the opportunities for malaysia and through this connection opportunities are open up there are opportunities for businesses there are opportunities for philanthropy correct i mean it's because people are now connected instantaneously intensely and constantly with their country of origin in the old days you were gone you were gone forever you were a lost actor but now you know we say that uh, geography is history how much has technology helped your organization enormously just because a people are connecting because they're going online and they're reading newspapers they're learning people in australia know what's happening in ireland before I do, they, they learn about it quicker and earlier because of the time change. So people are intensely connected and technology has allowed that. You look like a, a, at an organization like, for example, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn have details on 250 million people in the world and the, who are professional people who have voluntarily give them all their information on their education and on their careers. So, you know, you can track and find people uh, extraordinarily using technology. But at the end of the day, my industry is not just about a technology. It's, it is about being high touch as well as high tech. As a foundation, you go around also helping other organizations other countries help them take advantage of their diaspora to network what are some of the things you tell them to do well you know the interesting thing about my industry is that now that I'm in in this stage of sort of advising and helping different countries engage in it it's non-competitive Somebody who's going to help Malaysia is not going to help Scotland, Jamaica, or Kenya, and vice versa. So that's really exciting. So we should, in our industry, exchange and swap all sorts of ideas. And I have to say, I joke and I say, I'm a founder member of a group called CASE. And CASE stands for Copy and Steal Everything. I figure <laughs> you know, we can learn so much from other countries, and so many countries can learn from us. Let me give you one little example. This year in Ireland is the year of the gathering. The Irish government, through their tourist board, decided to choose this year as the year to invite back to Ireland members of our diaspora. 4,000 events were organised, not by the government, but by local communities who went out and organised themselves to invite back to little towns and villages in Ireland people who are connected in some way. 4,000 events, as I said, 300,000 people have come back. is an extraordinarily successful thing. Now, any country can do that. 
And lots of countries are curious about what Ireland is doing. And in fact, Ireland didn't invent this. Scotland did it in 2009 with the homecoming in Scotland. And they went, reached out to their clans around the world and invited them back. And they're doing it again next year, 2014. So you see, there are things we can learn from each other. Yeah, and just imagine this huge number of people making the trips back to Ireland and to Scotland or even to Malaysia. Sure. That amount of energy and an amount of ideas. Well, you know, it's not just the money. It's easy about the ideas and the energy. And they bring back attitudes. They bring back creativity. And they bring back notions. And they build new relationships. And suddenly new networks start getting spawned. And people are beginning and thinking about what they're going to do in the future and how they're going to follow up with this stuff. So it actually does bring an enormous degree of energy to the space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kingsley Aikens, a guru on diaspora and global philanthropy, sharing with us his insights on the Irish diaspora and how it may provide a way to address skills and resources issues within the country. This is Resource Centre and Enterprise, and I'm Lim Sun Heng, BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.